Welcome to Sensor. This reading is from Sensor number 125. And before I begin the uh, article, I'd like to quote a few biblical passages which will prove uh, applicable to the article. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that gives to the rich shall surely come to want. Proverbs 22, verse 16 He that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Proverbs 28, verse 20 and as the nail sticks to the stone, so sin sticks to buying and selling. Ecclesiastes 27, verse 2. And now the article, The War on the Poor, by William J. Eisenman, Ph.D. The unemployment rate in October 2009 was 10.2 percent, and between April 2008 and October 2009, the job creation shortfall was 9.5 million. It must be kept in mind that the financial meltdown of Wall Street began in 2007 and hit its stride in September 2008. Some figures peg the middle class in America as falling between $35,000 and $105,000. Also keep in mind that only 12% of all income is held by the bottom 40% of Americans, and that today over 48 million Americans are on food stamps. The official unemployment rate at this time is 7.4 percent. This figure does not count those who have given up looking for work or those underemployed and so many, many more. The true figure could be anywhere from 14 to 22 percent. Median income in America did not grow from 2001 through 2007, 50,557 in 2000, and it was 50,223 in 2007. To cheat those receiving cost of living increases on their Social Security earnings, the Boston Commission in 1995 informed Congress that inflation was overstated by 1.2 percent. This resulted in cuts to Social Security payments all these years. About 91 percent of Americans believe they are in the middle class. The figures are a bit confusing, but some call themselves middle class, making $35,000 to $70,000. Others call themselves upper middle class, while making $70,000 to $105,000. If you make more than $105,000, you might call yourself well off. Other figures state that if you made $35,000, you would be considered poor or near poor. In 1800, 80% of Americans, workers, were connected to the land. By 1900, it was 40%. Today, it's a mere 1%. We cannot truly claim to be free without land as a possession. Even the Bible makes this clear in Micah 4, verse 4. In 1959, 
the elderly poverty rate was 35 percent, and in 2006 it was 9.4 percent. The national poverty rate today is 25 percent. Employers and employees contribute 6.2 percent to the Social Security system, up to $113,000. After that, no more payments. The rich pay no Social Security taxes. Social Security has nothing to do with the national deficit. Social Security is not a welfare program. Social Security is its own tax and fund. The Social Security fund is invested in U.S. Treasury bonds. Now, if Social Security had been privatized, as George W. Bush wanted, the financial meltdown would have wiped out millions much like what happened uh, to uh, 401ks during the financial meltdown of 2007 and 2008. Privatization is not a benign process and has negative social consequences. Republicans seek to privatize Social Security to allow their masters on Wall Street to get hold of the Social Security Trust Fund. As of this writing, Social Security, the Social Security Trust Fund disappears in 2037. That is, if we do nothing. Remember that it was Republican laissez-faire policies that allowed the financial meltdown to occur. They were aided by wannabe Clinton New Democrats who wanted in on the action. Laissez faire on steroids. The rich have their poor have the poor in their sights. Psalm ten verse two and Psalm ten verse nine. Obviously this is nothing new. What is new is that the rich have the poor, the near poor, and middle class on their side, pitying billionaires. It's grotesque. These are the same people that when they vote, they don't vote in their own interest. They vote the interests of billionaires and millionaires and counterfeit Christians. These people are confused and many times deceived. It is these people who are always posting on Facebook things such as, I work hard for my money. I don't want it going to pay lazy people not to work or who are on welfare and the like. There's not one peep out of them concerning subsidies, grants, and tax money going to big oil and other corporate pigs at the trough. There's not one word about fraud, waste, or our bloated socialistic military budget. It's the same with those in government who call themselves conservative Christians, yet want to cut food stamps, but not the corporate greed. These people are in no way Christians. They are unaware of the God-given right of the poor. Today, in cities like Columbia, South Carolina, and Hackensack, New Jersey, the homeless are being criminalized. These laws are violations of civil and constitutional laws, and they are violations of God's spiritual laws. The people doing these things are immoral, evil, and deceived. Revelation 12, 9. Between 1980 and 2007, house prices in the United States quadrupled. 
in 1982, the Dow Jones was only 803. It was 14,165 in 2007. Now it's over 1,500. In the last 30 years, economic uncertainty and unfairness have grown to grotesque extremes. From the 1950s through the 1970s, the share of income captured by the super-rich has was cut back by more than half. This was not as a result of natural occurrences or blessings from God. It was as a result of laws and regulations. From the 1980s till today, the piece of the income, income pie taken yearly by the rich became again hugely disproportionate such as it was in the 1920s. In the 1980s, Wall Street accounted for 16% of all American profits. Today, it's 41%. Since 2007, 40% of the value of publicly traded companies has evaporated. Several trillion dollars worth of home equity gone Along with this, over five million jobs went bye-bye. The American economy is out of balance as it stands. The benefits of the economy are not shared by all Americans. The fundamentals of our economy are skewed. There is a huge distortion in how income is distributed. It has also become clear in the post-World War II period, as finance has come to be a greater part of our economy, especially since the 1980s, our real economy has slowed. In the 1970s, the richest 1%, anybody remember Occupy Wall Street? Took in less than 9% of the nation's total income, but by 2007 it was 23.5%. The recovery we are experiencing is anemic because the middle class and poor have a little purchasing power, because the bailouts and stimulus money went to Wall Street and the haves. As a result, our economy is stagnant. The system is broken and corrupt. We need change. The umbilical cord between government and corporations must be severed, must be kept out of elections. Oh, excuse me, money must be kept out of elections. The influence of the wealthy on government, government must cease. We must return the tilt of government back toward we, the people. Main Street is the real economy. Consumers represent 70% of the economy. Our mass production economy must be accompanied by mass consumption. There can be no mass consumption without the 70% of consumers having purchasing power. In the last 30 years, wages for typical Americans have hardly increased. Wages used to rise in tandem with profits. Today's unemployment problem proves the point that unemployment is a failure of demand and that demand is a failure of purchasing power. The rich can't spend enough to sustain our economy. Jeremy Bentham said, taxing the wealthy to help the poor increases the sum total of happiness. Our tax system was set up with just this sentiment in mind. Those with the most money pay the most taxes. Forgetting the altruistic nature of our tax system, the fundamental reason for taxing the rich is to defang them, to prevent what has happened. They have grown too influential 
and powerful. Today, the rich and powerful, along with corporations, own our government, have taken it over. Having us pity billionaires makes them more powerful and less socially conscious. These issues have allowed companies like Halliburton, Monsanto, and GE, General Electric, to end up totally self-centered corrupt, and many times just plain evil. Also, when they don't pay their taxes, we must make up the shortfall. They rob from us. They may at times cause pain, destruction, and death with impunity, and still make a dollar. All of this has undermined our democracy. And do not fall for the propaganda that high taxes on the rich means slow growth, because there is no correlation between higher taxes on the rich and slower economic growth. A shadow market exists in the world. It consists of a collection of unaffiliated, extremely wealthy nations and investors that run the international economy through their prodigious holdings of stocks, bonds, real estate, currencies, and other financial instruments, which they keep in largely unregulated investment vehicles, such as hedge funds, private equity funds, and government-owned holding companies. Among these, money is a weapon. As of 2007, 60% of America's debt is held by foreigners and other governments. The global economy in 2008 was worth $62 trillion. The shadow market hides its activities, and this is not some conspiracy theory, this is real. Today, Investing is a rich man's game, and only a few can play. In 2009, there were 359 billionaires in America. Can we all shed a tear? All of this goes on without significant regulation, and it is not good for the real economy. Propagandists for free markets and laissez-faire economics have for years tried to convince us that free markets was the way to spread democracy and freedom around the world. That worked real well in red China. They have also been trying to convince us that low tax rates on the rich and corporations will make us economic powerhouses. The unemployment rate in Norway is 2%, and the tax rate is 50%, while for corporations it is 28%. Norwegians live a pretty darn good life. Oh, by the way, they have free health insurance. Both the Democrats and Republicans owe their souls to the corporations, big business, and the wealthy. It cannot be stressed often enough that America today is a fascist nation. Fascism results when the corporations and government are married to each other. Big corporations own our government. One thing we need to do is abolish all political parties. John Adams warned that political parties are to be feared as the greatest political evil under the Constitution. The first political parties in America were the Democrats and the Whigs. Many Americans debate whether America the Beautiful should be our country's national anthem instead of the Star-Spangled Banner. 
But some of them might be put off by the third verse. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, till selfish gain no longer stain the banner of the free. It is certain those on Wall Street would not want that verse sung. In 2010, the poverty rate in the United States was 15.1%. And at that time, some 46.2 million Americans were below the poverty line, which was $22,314 for a family of four. At that time, the median household income fell by 2.3%. Jobs are not available. Yet Congressman Paul Ryan and his demon Republican enablers are seeking to cut food stamps. These are evil intentions. We have conservative counterfeit Christians up in arms concerning gay marriage, but they raise not a peep about the unholy marriage between corporations and the United States government. In 2010, there were about 3.5 million homeless Americans. Wages had declined for 90% of Americans. In 2009, 1,470 Americans made more than a million dollars, but paid no taxes. The subsidies to the oil industry yearly amounts to about one trillion dollars. In the last decade, the military budget has gone from $300 billion to $700 billion. But in actuality, it is much more and accounts for one-third of the budget. These expenditures have not made us safer, nor earned us respect from tyrants around the world. Even when the United States was the only country to have the atomic bomb, small countries were at war with us. Those conservative neocons who wrote the project for the new American century fail to understand that no enemy, big or small, fears the United States. Bible prophecy makes it clear that the United States, one of the modern-day descendants of one of the tribes of ancient Israel, has won its last war with World War II. Whatever good ideas the Tea Party may have started out with, it's been corrupted. The Tea Party has been co-opted by the Koch brothers, the Cato Institute, and donors to the Federalist Society. The Tea Party today is a front group for billionaires and millionaires. Once the Tea Party goals were small government, nothing about smaller or less powerful corporations. They are anti-regulation which amounts to letting corporations do what the hell they want. Even poison our food and medicines. Remember that it was lack of regulations that led to the 2007-2008 financial meltdown. They want to do away with Social Security and Obamacare but they certainly don't want to put back Glass-Steagall. Tea Party members are not friends of the middle class or the poor. Tea Party members in government court the Christian right, believing that God wants a limited federal government 
They are unaware that God wants no human governments. Today's right-wing Christian believes God is against taxing the rich and is against unions and the capital gains tax. They also believe there should be no hikes in the minimum wage. This is all foolishness. This is all false Christianity. It is a cancer on our body politic. As censored as shown throughout the God Project, the Bible shows that right-wing conservative Christian Republicans and their war on the poor is wrong, and they are doing the opposite of what the God of the Bible demands. It's time to call out the right-wing conservative Christian Republicans. They are not Christians at all, Mark 7, verses 7 through 9. They have made up their own God and religion. It is also time for Roman Catholics like Antonin Scalia and Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court of the United States, along with Rick Santorum, to learn a bit of history about their church which in its early form persecuted the early church that Jesus founded. The Roman Catholic Church martyred 11 of the apostles and had the saints killed. Revelation 17. In converting by the sword and torture, along with the Crusades, the Roman Catholic Church killed 50 million people. The Roman Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Empire gave us the first day of the week Sabbath rather than the seventh day Sabbath sanctioned by God. We've come full circle. Before the financial meltdown of 2007-2008, the subprime loan industry claimed they were helping the poor. Our capitalistic system uses capital, money, as fuel. Those with little capital are always at a disadvantage in such a system. The poor lack capital, money. Even our country's meager safety net is designed to not offer Turning page here. A helping hand up. No one can get rich on welfare. Yet the Tea Party and conservative Republicans would have us believe that no one on welfare is deserving. They are all welfare kings and queens and the women are mere baby factories. These ideas are evil and dangerous. Jesus said the poor would always be with us. He also th said that what you do for the least among us, you've done to him. According to a recent figure, it would take about $135 billion dollars to end poverty in the United States. We spent a hell of a lot more than that on the Wall Street bailout and TARP. It seems that we can always find money for wars and the like, but never for food or education. One thing should be crystal clear by now. Conservative Republican Christians are phonies, not Christian at all and what they want to do to the poor and to our government are weird political ideas conjured up by evil minds. They use God as a front man, and Christianity is a cloak for their evil intentions. They live the devil's get way of life. They are greedy and selfish. And when they make war on the poor, 
They make war on God and His Word, the Bible. They have never been doing God's work. They don't know what God wants. Now that you know the truth, what will you do to stop these counterfeit Christians from doing their evil? The end.